Hey out there, this is Friday, December 1st, 2017, where it's uh, just about uh, three minutes, I guess, before nine in the morning here in Northern California. And uh, as you just saw, I showed a clip of um, those two women, those two beautiful women I had on each arm, and uh, those are my grown daughters in their 30s, and uh, that was taken at... Uh, my younger daughter's wedding uh, back in August and I just wanted to share that with the world and um, that's my pride and joy those are my greatest accomplishments up to date that I know of but uh, they're wonderful women and uh, I just couldn't ask for more and I just feel like a very wealthy lucky man and uh, and I even feel like I got away with something, you know, that's a kind of a peculiar feeling, I suppose, to try to convey. But um, it's just how grateful I feel that uh, God had, um, you know, gifted me in this manner. And uh, I just feel really blessed. And, uh, you know, I couldn't imagine that a uh, hundred billion dollars would make me any happier than those two beautiful women. Yeah, yeah, I think any guy that has daughters understands. Um, well, folks, as usual, I'm going to get into a lot of different stuff. Now, we just heard that uh, this guy that killed this this man's daughter, I think she was in her early 30s, about my daughter's age. And um, the, uh, the illegal, um, uh, undocumented, to be politically correct, the undocumented fellow... Um, that had been deported many times that uh, was showing rather brazen criminal behavior apparently and um, he just kept on coming right back you know kind of like whack-a-mole um, and uh, so the guy is likely mentally unstable um, which is par for the course I think that uh, all people are a little bit mentally unstable I don't see how you cannot be a little bit mentally unstable living in this crazy world but um he was acquitted of any not even involuntary manslaughter i mean i don't understand that it seems like at least it's an involuntary manslaughter i mean it's you know we're supposed to believe and that jury was convinced that he didn't aim the gun at all that it was just a fluke that uh, he picked up the gun being utterly ignorant about how a gun works and he just accidentally just grabbed it hard enough by the trigger to pull the trigger and that bullet just went and hit that woman. Well, I don't know. I wasn't one of the jurors, so it's pretty tough to second guess them. But um, as we all know, that's uh, an exceedingly, for lack of a better term, um, pseudo-liberal. I want to call San Francisco kind of a pseudo-liberal town and uh this is kind of where i wanted the focus to be today and the theme of the video today although i'll talk about a lot of different stuff i mainly wanted to talk about um making peace and uh this idea of shattering the left right paradigm now that's a term that was coined by alex jones and that was what got me hooked on alex jones the alex jones channel and Infowars. And I'm kind of trying to hold him to that whole idea of, you know, remember, because this is really what drew me in, was this philosophy that he was into. He believed that this was invented, that this was concocted, that this is conjured up. And I hold fast that that's true. I mean, if we go back to the time Jesus walked the earth, uh, these terms left, right, didn't exist. Liberal, conservative, um, communist, socialist, capitalist none of these terms existed okay it, we weren't divided in such a manner we were divided it was strictly you were either wicked or you were um holy you were righteous or you were unrighteous you were good or you were bad um you either um confessed your sin or you were unrepentant and you reveled in your sin and prescribed to an ignorance is bliss philosophy not admitting your own shortcomings. 
so we were we have always been divided in that sense, but it has much more to do with this uh, way outside the box way of thinking. Unlike today, we're in a box. They've got us. They who are they? They are the controllers. They are the ones that are manipulating our hearts, our minds. And our reality, they create the policies that we all have to live under that they're exempt from. And they're not nice people. These are mean people. You got mean people, you got nice people. I mean, you want to divide people, we can do that. But mainly it has to do with asking ourselves a basic question. Have we given our lives over to God or have we not? And we will know that by the fruits. But the whole left-right thing is just concoction. It's just a conjured up, I say, because these people are into such things as sorcery. They're into diabolism. It's like a religion of these people, and they're very devout. Luciferianism, Satanism. It's just an abandonment of conscience, abandonment of integrity and honor. It's uh, devaluing. They don't care. Those things aren't pertinent. They're not relevant, okay? These are the ones that exalt themselves. They think they're so much wiser than everybody else because they were the quick first ones to jump on this bandwagon of death and destruction, of abandonment of conscience and caring about where your soul goes from here. Integrity, honor, honesty, just basic uprightness and decency and treating others the way you want to be treated, okay? They think that's why they deserve to rule the world, that they're willing to just, look, I got a murder, and I've rationalized this to the nth degree, and uh, that's, yes, I'm a hypocrite, and yes, and here's my reason why, and you know what, if you don't like it, that's too bad, but, uh, you know, the only God I have is myself, okay? And, you know, my relationship with the, uh, the underworld or whatever. I mean, I don't know what the hell these people are into, but it's some sick stuff because they're really not nearly as intelligent as they think because if they were so intelligent, they'd be righteous, okay? They would have decency, common decency. They would care about the welfare of the least of men. This is what's going to decide where we go from here, how we have thought about the least of men. Jesus described the least of men as being himself. It's all really very simple. God ba bases everything that... He reveals to us and of his character and nature on logic and reason. And yes, there's some, a degree of intellect, but mostly it's honesty because, like it's written, the children understand these things. That God, you know, the wisdom is the children get it. it it's a two plus two thing. And so what happens? Why can't so many adults seem to understand this? Why are we so divided in this way? Well, Satan has been effective. He has twisted our minds, our hearts, and our spirits and everything. We're all screwed up. We're all adulterated. And it doesn't help to not admit it. I mean, it's hard. It's amazing any of us can cope. I mean, that's why God is so merciful and patient, restrained, and, 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 and compassionate, merciful toward us. Because he knows the kind of the pressure and the stressors we're contending with in this world. When you try to be an upright, decent person, and you try to be a friend to humanity at large, because that's a teaching from Jesus. He said, look, love your enemies. So if Jesus not only gave us permission to love our enemies, but he gave us a commission, okay, that's, that's kind of a, a, you know, a commandment, really, is to love your enemy. Do this thing. I mean, you think you know me? You're not going to tell me how I am. God is saying to us, you're going to learn to be like me. I'm not going to learn to be. You guys are the ones with all the problems down here. You want to fix them? Then listen to me. Love your enemy. Okay? Those that you, you, you have been told are your enemies, at least. Okay? Because perception is reality. And if we believe people on the far left are our enemy or people on the far right are our enemy, then who's our enemy? And who did this to? Who convinced you to believe that way? Right? And now telling you that, yes, now you're wise. You've abandoned all that naive, foolish, religious thinking of honor, integrity, soul, conscience, all that, uh, that nonsense that's to no avail. It's profitless garbage. It's not going to pay your bills. Okay? What you need is money. You need the God of this world because this is how it all works. This is the power structure of the God of this world. And it's, it's when, you, when you really wake up, it's traumatic when you realize how different we've got to cultivate. The, the, the path that we've got to go down is diametrically opposite of the one that we've been on. 
So yes, we're all screwed up. Of course we are. Children are the least screwed up. That's why they can understand stuff so readily. And do we listen to the children? No, we're not listening to the children. Look at, we're insane. Starting these wars, do we know the implications? That, are we seeing this through God's eyes? I would, this is crazy. Children are being maimed and murdered, you know, wholesale. And it's like, we, we just think, oh, well, you know, the stock market's up. Everything's cool. I mean, don't worry. Go on with your life. Yeah, we had 9-11. Yeah, there's a small cadre of evil people that uh, have a lot of power, and they were able to pull this off, and they got away with it. And Oh, well, just get over it, man. Move along now. The economy is picking up, and everything's cool and groovy now. And, yes, he had Bill Clinton, he got rid of the Glass-Steagall Act, this Consumer Protection Act that kept the banksters at bay. And, and now, you know, he got rid of that. So, you know, uh, and George Bush green-lighted these these wolf-like banksters to just dump money on the housing market and escalate housing par uh, prices through the roof, telling everybody it's a good thing. They got the mainstream media involved telling you how wonderful it is that your house went up in value and how great this is. What a wonderful thing that your housing dollars have been debased to the nth degree. My God, the idiocy is palpable. And yet I'm the radical one here. I'm a fiscal conservative. I'm also liberal very liberal. I'm not taking anything from anybody. I just want to add more. I'm very generous and giving. I believe in freedom, total freedom, absolute freedom, not for some, but for everybody. I say that's what God is, that it's not God that said you're bound by money and you beholden to the money masters of misery, okay? And as far as fiscal conservative, I mean, I'm willing to do the math. Let's do the math in this stuff I talk about. All I'm saying is we've got to understand the madness that is so prevalent. And it, there's no way any of us are going to avoid getting our share of madness and insanity because that's what we're being rendered in the image and likeness of these rulers. And they're illegitimate as all hell. They don't know what they, they don't, they're insane. If they were good people, they would be kind people. Okay. They're not, they're not good people. They're not kind people. They care about getting their way. And if a house gets in their way, they'll burn it down. That means if a president of the United States gets in their way, they'll burn them down, just like they did with JFK. That's how they've been ruling. But, you know, are we reaching a point in history where that's all going to change? Well, I contend that we are. And I see what Trump is doing, and I say, my God, you know, liberals, I plead with you. I, I beg true, honest liberals that really believe in 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 rights, okay, and rights are uh, like the Constitution, the right to pursue happiness, um, the um, the freedom of speech, okay. This is very important uh, to understand your constitutional rights, and the rights are entitlements, okay. And that that term alone is just it, it seems like a hot button issue for so many people. Oh, your privilege, you're entitled. We're all privileged. We're all entitled. We're trying to do things through God's methods, okay? And the methods that God wants us to do things through is just tapping into his spirit. And that gives us the power to be free, to free each other from this left-right nonsense. I mean, I tell you, if you took, let's say there's a room full of, of 200 people and 100 of them are very devout liberals and 100 of them are very devout conservatives. And you really sat down and you went through a, a laundry list of, 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 uh, of um, elements, facets, components that determined uh, liberal from conservative. What you'd find out if they took this test, they might find out that, hey, this guy that thought he was a devout liberal, turns out he was actually a devout conservative, depending on how we define these terms. So the point is, is we just have to just say, understand, we've been duped to the nth degree. This is serious stuff. I mean, people are dying. I mean, uh, this is not a joke, okay? Look, like I talked about, um, not last week, I missed uh, doing the video last week, the week before I was talking about how, hey, you know, you if you want to learn about economics, then you take some economic courses. You go to your community college, you go to your universities, whatever. And you learn about economics. But the thing is, is that you're learning about economics what the professors have been told to teach about economics. They themselves might know much more. If they are spiritual people, they are honest people, 
then they know certain things that the vast majority of people don't know. And they know things that you ought to know, okay? But unless the questions are asked, you will never find out. For example,